As Israel's war on Gaza rages, people are going into the streets around the planet, including within the United States. Thousands hit the streets in New York on Thursday, and more are expected Friday to gather at Columbus Circle. In and around Washington, D.C., there have been massive protests also, and some smaller ones. This past Wednesday, 10 people, mostly college students, were arrested after interrupting a congressional hearing. They demanded pro-Palestinian students be protected when they speak out on campuses about the Israel-Gaza war. The group said there's been unprecedented repression for students who condemn Israel's attacks in Gaza. At least 10,569 people have been killed in Gaza and 26,475 wounded, according to the Gaza Health Ministry, as of Wednesday. Attacks have raged since Wednesday on that city. Also in metropolitan Washington, D.C., six people protesting the war were arrested outside U.S. defense contractor Raytheon's office in Arlington, Virginia, also on Wednesday. The age of those protesters ranged from 28 to 77. They were from as far away as Wisconsin and as close as Baltimore. According to a spokesperson for the Arlington County Police, the six were charged with trespassing. We spoke with one of the activists, Brad Wolf, who was arraigned on Thursday along with his five compatriots. We spoke with them via Zoom on Friday. Brad, why don't you tell us, first of all, about the arraignment yesterday? Uh, it's my understanding you were in D.C. for a protest on Wednesday, and on Thursday, you were in front of a judge being arraigned. Talk to us about that. Sure, and, th- and thank you for having me on. So I went down with a, a group of supporters for the Merchants of Death War Crimes Tribunal, and we were outside of Raytheon Technologies in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, they are a weapons manufacturer, what we refer to as a merchant of death, and we were protesting on their sidewalk. Uh, They claim to have purchased the public sidewalk and claim it as uh, private property. And so we challenged that, and we had a die-in on the sidewalk in front of their building. It was a peaceful act of civil disobedience. They immediately came out, told us to leave. We told them as a matter of conscience we could not do so, that they were building bombs in that building that were falling on Gaza as we speak. And so they called the police and the police arrived. I think there were probably three police cars, two police officers on motorbikes and a paddy wagon. They gave us uh, numerous warnings to leave. We refused to do so, again, as a matter of conscience, telling them that we had done everything we could, writing our congressmen, our senators, doing all that we could. We were getting no response to stop the killing. And so this is what we were left to do. And we were subsequently arrested, taken to the Arlington County prison, held for six hours, brought before a magistrate, charged with a misdemeanor of the first degree, trespass, had a bail bond hearing, and were told to return the next day to the courthouse Thursday at two o'clock for arraignment. And uh, we returned for arraignment yesterday, and the judge set a trial date for January 10th. So we were all held for trial on a misdemeanor charge. And the misdemeanor charge is uh, a serious charge in the state of Virginia. It uh, has a maximum penalty of 12 months in prison and a $2,500 fine. And all of this for a peaceful protest on the sidewalk in front of Raytheon. And we strongly feel we were not the ones doing damage that day. Raytheon was the one building bombs and doing damage that day. This was a piece of a much larger effort. The Merchants of Death War Crimes Tribunal is a people's tribunal that was started about uh, two years ago with Kathy Kelly, Nick Modern, and myself. And it is an effort to hold accountable United States weapons manufacturers for committing crimes against humanity and war crimes. And we believe that these weapons manufacturers knowingly produce weapons that kill innocents. And therefore, they're violating the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. And though the People's Tribunal lacks legal authority, it has tremendous moral authority because this is a citizenry standing up and trying to hold accountable actors in this country for illegal acts. And when the government doesn't respond and the courts have been captured by the criminals, the people have to act. And so this is grassroots justice. So we've been interviewing uh, for the last two years, retired military officials, military analysts, lawyers, theologians, doctors, epidemiologists, and victims from all the war zones to collect testimony and demonstrate that these weapons manufacturers are guilty We selected four weapons manufacturers as being representative of the entire U.S. war industry, and those four 
are Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and the drone maker, General Atomics. So we indicted them. We delivered subpoenas to them last November of 2022. We returned in February of 2023 and delivered contempt citations. And we went back there again Wednesday to hold them accountable because the tribunal starts this Sunday evening at eight o'clock Eastern time. It is a live streamed event. I encourage everybody listening to go to merchantsofdeath.org. That's merchantsofdeath.org. You can register there for the event. Watch the evidence that we're going to prepare. These are going to be video documentaries that we're going to be sending out over a period of several months. And we've uh, assembled a, a, a jury of 11 jurors from across the globe, from all the affected areas. And they're going to deliberate on this evidence and render a report and a verdict at the end. So it's something that everybody can participate in. They can watch these videos at their convenience. But the live streamed event, the opening gavel session is this Sunday evening, November 12th, 8 o'clock Eastern time. And again, that's merchantsofdeath.org. You know, you mentioned Nick Motter, and I, I, I know his work. And um, one of the things he's focused on steadily, in other words, no drones, K-N-O-W drones, I think, .org or .com or .net, whatever, is one of his projects for years now. This is something he's been at for a long time. He has banned killer drones, which is his organization, also with Veterans for Peace. And if he was successful then, by the way, while he was playing Canary in the Mine, uh, there were thousands and thousands of people around the world whose lives wouldn't have been ended by drones, from mostly from the United States. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, looking at the landscape, uh, you know, it's it's surprising how suddenly there's this mass of people, you know, showing up at actions all across the country, even in smaller towns. Uh, Lancaster, where you are, for example, uh, you mentioned earlier before we were on mic that there, you know, the protest there had a few hundred people in a, you know, in a small town of 60,000, I think, or 70,000. Um, this is the massive ones in New York City, the die-in earlier this week at Grand Central, and then yesterday, the New York Times. And what is it about this particular you know, issue, this incident, this activity that's going on in, in Palestine that is bringing people out in a way that, you know, the, the other wars like Ukraine have not brought people out into the street like that. What do you think it is? Well, I think it's I think it's genocide in plain sight and people are seeing it. The United States military is very effective at making wars invisible. And Norman Solomon, one of our witnesses at the tribunal, has written books about how the media and the military make wars invisible to most Americans. We don't see the killing that we do. We don't know what's done with our tax dollars and in our names. But here in Gaza, we're seeing it every day. We're not following for the common war narrative that's put out by the Pentagon and the Biden administration. Uh, young people, old people, everybody is is infuriated and enraged, and rightfully so, at what they see in terms of happening in Gaza every day. You know, it, the pictures coming out, the stories coming out, refugee camps being bombed, hospitals being bombed, medicine not being permitted to go in. Uh, it, you know, it's an outrage. And they know it's being done with United States weapons, United States taxpayer dollars, and with the cover of the Biden administration. So people are naturally infuriated that this is being done in their name and they want it to stop. So it doesn't have the cover of all of our other hidden wars of the last 20 years since 9-11. Those wars of terror have taken some 4 million lives, according to Brown University and the cost of war project that they have. This one is in plain sight. They can't hide it. And that's why the Biden administration is struggling so much right now. And I think that's why so many activists are coming out. And, and I would mention many of the people coming out at the events you mentioned, they're first timers. You know, they're, they're, this is not something that they've done for years. They're getting out of their comfort zone. They're getting into the streets and they're acting, which is really what's necessary they recognize that institutions, so-called institutions like the New York Times and the Washington Post, are corporate entities uh, who are reliant upon other corporations that are makes them all part of this military industrial media complex. So they have a particular narrative that they have to spin. And there is a reaction to this. There is a, a real frustration and anger among people that they've been deceived for a long time. Their tax dollars have been stolen for war, and a lot of innocent people have been killed using those tax dollars. And the media is complicit in all of this. And our tribunal 
is holding the media accountable as well. And we spend a fair amount of time discussing how the media is complicit with the military in committing all these war crimes and trying to make war invisible to the American people. Yeah, um, there were uh, media figures in front of the judges at Nuremberg, as a matter of fact, for their role. Uh, Brad, thank you so much. Give us the website one more time. The website is merchantsofdeath.org. And you can register. It is free. You can register for the opening session, which is this Sunday evening, November 12th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you very much. Thank you. For KPFK, I'm Don DeBar.